Ciao. Oh, and welcome back. It's great to have for me to go maybe a little more slowly. That's true. Because otherwise I'd sound like the chipmunk I was sounding like earlier. I was going to say, I could, I could have just left you the way you were if we were going to do that. Uh, you missed Adam's chipmunk imitation, by the way. Adam Christensen here with us today, uh, giving us his reaction and, you know, us having a conversation, obviously, to the uh, One More Thing event, which is Adam and I talk happened just about 11 hours ago, 11 and a half hours ago, maybe. So here's why I'm excited to talk to you. And why I wanted you to be the first person I talked to this week. I I think of you as more of a hardware, I don't want to say nerd, um, more of a hardware guy than I am. Because, like, my thought on every new Mac is always, well, that sounds faster. Or that sounds better. Or that Mm -hmm. sounds more expensive. You know, and that's almost where I stop. Oh, they're taking away that connector I like? That's a bummer. Oh, they're adding in these other connectors? Well, that sounds fine. I mean, you know, Apple throws out things like, you know, we can do 15 trillion, uh, you know, uh, things a second. (laughs) Right. And it's like eight times faster, nine times faster, 12 times. Now, you know, this is faster, 3.5 times faster than our last MacBook Air. I understand that. Everything else Mm -hmm. I get a little, you know... Uh, squiffy on Uh, talk to me about what you saw today what you liked what you wish you had seen Uh, the floor is yours Mr. Christensen um wow there's a lot to dive into there um I liked a lot of what I saw I think a lot of what we saw was somewhat predicted um the big surprise for me was the was the Mac Mini. I actually had a listener who emailed me in and emailed me and said, "Hey, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna update the Mac Mini because they did that as the developer box." And See? I went, "I don't think they're gonna do that because we hadn't heard any rumors about that." But of course, he was dead on right, and That's it makes a- sense. It absolutely makes sense. I gotta say, really quickly talking about it on the live show because everybody was like, "They're gonna do one, uh, they're gonna do one laptop." And then it felt to me like having a big event for one laptop seemed too much. And then so people are like, well, what are they going to do? And I did actually, I don't remember if it was on the recorded part or in the after show. I did though say I could see them doing a Mac Mini for the exact same reason that that listener of yours said. Because yeah. they'd already done it. So why wouldn't you go ahead and do it, you know, with a more beefed up processor? Well, and it was, it was overdue too. And, and the way the processor is, you know, I, th- I think they did what is in my mind kind of the the safe thing i mean they're in a transition now Mm -hmm. um so what i'm most excited about just to to direct answer the question i'm most excited about just the whole transition i'm excited about apple moving away from intel um not that intel was bad or that intel hasn't served us very very well for many many years and that not that they don't have good products we're still going to see some intel Macs. i think this this year potentially i mean Tim Cook said, and well, not this year, but in this next cycle, mm-hmm. um, I think Tim Cook has said as much. Um, and uh, but I'm excited because Apple has proven with the iOS devices that they're really, really, really good at making high performance processors that are very energy efficient. And when you ask anybody what they care about at the end of the day, is they want their machines to work really well, uh, be fast. And uh, especially with portables, you know, last last for a really long time. And that's where Intel was sort of not delivering for Apple. And so I think, you know, when they found with especially with the iPads and the iPad Pro that they they had really proven themselves, you know, I think that's when the thoughts of this whole transition came about. So, you know, I'm excited about all of them. I, I, the, the mini I think is incredible. I think it was well overdue for an update and this is a, this is a nice update for that. Um, the air is another perfect candidate. I think that might be, um, my favorite thing that they, they announced, you know, the MacBook air is a, is a great computer. Um, I had one, a 13 inch, uh, 2011, for a long, long time, and I absolutely loved that machine, and the thought of going back to it is definitely appealing. I just bought a 16-inch not too long ago to replace my old uh, 2015 15-inch model, and I I actually love this machine, but um, it's enticing. Now, I say that uh, at the same time as, again, these are transition computers, and I think Apple did recognize that, so that's why I think they kind of focused more on 
what I would consider their entry level or consumer. Of course, they did the 13 inch MacBook Pro, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's technically a pro machine and a very popular pro machine. But it's not the machine that the high end pro guys, you know, the guys that I don't think that are doing a lot of video. You know, I'm going to say this and I know I'm going to get an email from people who are doing this. But, you know, it tends to be, I think, more people who are um, developers, probably podcasters is perfect for um you know, it, it, they're not, you're not talking about the guys that are probably doing heavy final cut work. You know, they're going with a 16 inch, they're going with a, with a larger model, I would imagine most of the time. Um, yeah. maybe some pro photographers are, are, especially if they're field photographers, 13 inch is a perfect model for them. So, it, you know, so all of that, I'm all, I'm excited about all of that. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to digest it yet. I need to get into the nitty gritty and, you know, all the details. Like you said, Apple throws out a bunch of numbers. They throw out a bunch of technologies. Um, there's a couple things that I'm pondering and a couple things that are some big changes that it makes you wonder. I think Dave Hamilton put out a tweet because he, he, he picked up a 13-inch Air and someone was asking him, he was commenting on the RAM. And uh, somebody said, "Oh, do you think someone will come out with a RAM upgrade?" And he he aptly pointed out, "Well, no, because it's even more than soldered on now. It's like in the processor. Like you are stuck with the RAM you buy, and you're not adding any more until you get a new machine. I mean, hmm. literally, there's there's no way to add RAM uh, right. other, than, other than when you buy it. You know, because it's it's in the system on a chip. It's 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 in." physically embedded in the same chip as which brings huge performance uh, benefits but yeah well, I, you guys, I was actually going to ask the ram you want i was going to ask about that actually because uh, a listener on the live show in the after chat that we were doing uh, a listener on the live show talked about the fact that it's not upgradable and i'm trying to figure out is that because it's the entry-level machine and well i mean no scratch that it's not upgradable for the reasons that you talked about because it's actually built in. But did right. they go with eight or sixteen? I mean, doing that is that because well, even though this is a pro machine, it's really prosumer or consumer, and so we're not going to worry exactly. about more RAM. Or are they saying, look, with this architecture, with our you know soup to nuts approach, with everything that we're doing optimized for this SOC, you're going to be fine with sixteen. I think they're trying to say both. I mean, honestly, and, and uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, but that's just the thing. That's one of the things I'm tentative about. That's one of the things I'm a little bit hesitant about. I mean, they still have to prove it, right? So it's yeah. fine to get up there in a keynote and say, it's this much faster, it's that much faster, you know, but we need to see it operating in real world environments. We need people, you know, operating them. But I, I think you're right, you know, at 16, especially on a pro model, you know, there's a lot of pros on the higher end that, you know, they need that they need 32. So, I mean, maybe Final Cut, you know, optimized for Apple Silicon uh, proves proves that they don't. But until then, I think people are going to be a little bit hesitant about that. Hmm. Um, and I think rightly so. I mean, it, it, they, they have to prove themselves. So like this is a big moment for Apple. Right. I mean, it's it's kind of bigger than just a processor transition because they're really saying Hey, we're going to prove that discrete, you know, built-in graphics are just as good as, um, you know, uh, an add-on graphics. Why can't I remember the term? Um, Dedicated discrete graphics. Right. (laughs) Okay. I was blanking on the term there for a second. No, quite Um, right. You know, so they they have a lot to prove. Um, But like I said, with the iOS processor and what they've done with... um, iPhones and iPads, they have proven it there. So I don't see any reason to doubt them in bringing it to the Mac. And the ability, you know, like you said, to optimize the software and the hardware is where they've always shined. So I would expect them to shine, expect them to shine again. Let me ask you really quickly, uh, because you mentioned the fact that Apple has said that there are more Intel Macs coming. Do you think there are more Intel Macs coming for the consumer? Or was that a message no. to business? All right. So is there a new yeah. Intel Mac that we're going to be able to buy? I mean, not that I want to, but I mean, is there a new Intel Mac coming out that you or I are going to be able to buy? Or are we done with that now and, you know, buy what's out there because the next new Mac in that line is going to be Apple Silicon and the one after that and the one after that? 
Yeah, I, I, you know, I really don't know. I'd be purely speculating at this point. Well, um, that's what I'm asking you to you, do. Come on, it's just you yeah, and me. Intel, Nobody is listening. <laughs> Nobody listens. I, Intel I, brought out. I, I heard Intel <laughs> announced some new processors again. I haven't very recently, like in the last couple of days, and I haven't had a, a, a chance to dig in. And they seem primed and ripe for some of the Pro models, um, like a 16-inch MacBook Pro. The reason I'm reticent there is because we had heard leading up to this event that Apple might do. And Apple might have had an Apple Silicon 16-inch uh, to announce. I didn't put a lot of stock in that rumor because I just didn't see it happening again. I think Apple's doing the smart thing. I think they're kind of bringing the processor out on the entry-level models. and Because it's, it's also going to take a long time for the software to transition over. And as good as things like uh, Universal Apps and Rosetta 2 are going to be, like those smooth the transition, but... I was around for the the you know IBM to Intel transition. I've said this on my show. There's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be hiccups. It, there's going to be things that uh, pro level users who need these machines for workflows daily to get things done, they just can't they can't deal with even little issues. Right? It's it it disrupts their workflows. So you know it's going to be a couple year transition. But consumers, it's easier to transition over less heavy workloads, less, you know, kind of dedicated reliance. So I think it's kind of the safe way to go. And I think that's the way they'll continue. So as far as what machines, I would imagine we might see um, some Intel, another Intel MacBook Pro. Um, the Mac Pro probably uh, will get another rev of Intel processors, I would imagine. Um, and then those will probably transition late 2021, 2022, I would think. One last question for you. Um, this is our fourth now virtual event. Uh, there's WWDC, because I think there was a press release release of something earlier this year. But as far as big events, there was WWDC, and then there was uh, Time Flies, there was uh, High Speed, and now one more thing. Right. Obviously, we're going to get rid of COVID one day, or it's going to get rid of us. But I mean, yeah. one day we're all assuming that we're going to be able to go back to work if we want to. We're going to be able to go back to big events if we want to. We're going to be able to go back to Disneyland if we want to. Are are, are we done going to Cupertino now? Because no, these, not at all. You don't think so? Because these things no. just sing, man. Like forty five minutes know, to fun, an hour. Right? They're fun and they're and they're concise and nothing gets messed up because they can fix it in post. You think you think they're yeah, going to bring people back one day? Yeah, I think they want to. I, I think um, Apple likes a live audience. Uh, they, I mean, they built a freaking theater for it, right? <laughs> wow. like, yeah. New, their new campus has a giant theater, and I think they've had just a handful of events in there. So, yeah, uh, you know, they, they built it for a reason. They built the showroom for a reason or the, the little demo area for a reason. Like, I think they want to use it. Um, I think we might see a mix, though. I could fully see them going... Uh, in doing some smaller announcements at, in this format and then saving, you know, the theater live ones for kind of bigger things. So it'll be interesting to see how they how they do that. But I totally agree with you. I love this this format. Like, they're really fun. They're super well produced. I mean, it's Apple. Of course, they're going to be super well produced. So that's yeah, great. Yeah.